Hey, Who's Elon, here? are you on V12 right now? Yeah, I'm on the V12 beta, which is just, you know, full AI end-to-end, -end, you know, photons in, controls out. It's uh, pretty amazing. It's just, it's driving very well. But I'm on the 280, so it's just driving down the 280. So right now, I think it's somewhat interesting from the production, autopilot production FSD, uh, the, the one that, you know, that sort of 200,000 people have, because it, it's, it's actually pretty easy to drive on a highway, or else we're speaking. But we're going to turn off the highway in about less than 10 minutes and then we'll be in Palo Alto and so we'll go cruising around Palo Alto. We might try to find Zuck's house and, uh, you know, challenge him to a fight if, we, if possible. But, you know, he's uh, probably traveling and he owns like 8,000 houses in Palo Alto, so I don't know which one he's at. But I love how you're prioritizing <laughs> the memes that you launch. Well done. Yeah. So you are going to live stream it. Yeah, so cool it and like, I think we're going to hit the turn off in about a page well turn off in like less than 10 minutes. Awesome. Uh, Hell yeah, this is so awesome. Yeah. So could you give us any more commentary like architecturally? I saw the CVPR conference and stuff, but you know, why go end to end? What's the advantage of, you know, moving control and everything over to neural nets? Well, I mean, this is basically how humans work. So we're sort of photons in to you know motor movements out to hand and foot movements out and so that's kind of what works best as opposed to injecting a bunch of heuristics now i should say that you know this does take a lot of training compute i think we will probably spend on the order of two billion dollars this year on training compute you know, a bunch of that is acquiring hardware so that'll last for some number of years so it's but we'll probably spend a similar amount next year actually more next year probably so this is it's, it's not like uh you know <laughs> walk in the park here it's a lot of data and a lot of training but it's a very few lines of actual code so it's really quite kind of remarkable it's i mean we obviously have a proof case in the form of humans that use biological neural net and eyes to drive and so cameras and digital neural net is kind of the, the solution to, is, it, is the, the correct general solution to self-driving. Now, the, the thing that's kind of a little weird is that it's actually hard for the car to explain what it's doing. But then the same is true when you are, say, driving in a taxi or an Uber or something. The, you don't actually know what the driver is thinking. You just know what the driver's track record is, you know, four or five star or whatever, and that they have a lot of experience. And so you kind of trust that experience, to, but they'll drive well. But you actually don't know for sure when you're in a taxi or whatever, that, that they're going to drive well. That's kind of how it will be for you know, FSD 12. So like r r really even like the rendering of what's on the screen is an approximation of what the car is thinking, not exactly what the car is thinking. But it's, I mean, it works really well and it's super smooth. So, wow. Yeah. You know, Elon, everyone's been talking about the GPU shortage. NVIDIA just reported monster earnings. And yeah. you've said that FSD is compute constraint. It is. What do you mean by that? And what will Dojo do to help that? Well, we do all of our training, or well, almost all of our training, I should say, on uh, NVIDIA hardware. We all, we're also bringing up Dojo, and we're doing some amount of training on Dojo. And we'll do an increasing amount of training on Dojo. But we, we have bought a lot of NVIDIA GPUs. And we can intend to continue uh, buying NVIDIA GPUs in addition to Dojo. So, like, it, it really it seems like the, the, the world is going to be very compute constrained for a while. With for and like, I don't know. I think like kind of like I think almost all of the data centers around the world will over time be AI instead of conventional CPUs. Or well, most of the like, if you were to say like, uh, what what percentage of the energy is being used for neural nets is gonna over time? I think be probably 80, 90 percent. Wow. So I think that's why Nvidia has such a high market cap is that people see demand being very substantial for a long time. So there's you know there's a lot of, there's room for both Nvidia and you know Tesla Dojo because the demand for neural net training and inference will be so high. It is so high. Although I do think that we're trending towards, you know, this year there being obviously a silicon shortage this year. But then at some point this will become, the choke point will be voltage step-down transformers because you still have to go. From... It's already happening. People were telling me today, huge wait times on transformers. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the irony is that you need transformers for transformers. So it's like, you know, a GPT is, a, you know, most of the compute is autoregressive transformers. The neural net, like the software version of transformers, and then you need a voltage step-down transformers to run the neural net transform, the software transformers. 
So anyway, transformers for transformers. So that so yeah, that, that, indeed there is a shortage of the lead time for voltage step down transformers is already I think on the order of a year and getting longer. And that's not an industry that's used to rapid change. They're used to pretty steady states stuff. And then then going beyond that, it, there I think there will be an electricity shortage. So generation capacity, especially if you have, if you need the compute to be in one place, which for training, you, you need the compute to be one place because the GPUs, which is actually the wrong word, the Google term is actually better than TPU, a tensor processing unit. GPU means graphics processing unit. So we're not doing graphics. In fact, the... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, actually, the H100 technically has a VGA port for boot up, but it has no actual high bandwidth graphics output capability. So it's weird to call something a graphic, a GPU that when it actually can't do graphics. I've been in a data center at Google and they had a square foot of data center space would have pizza box after pizza box on top of each other with no monitor, right? That So they're, what does it look like to have like 5,000 H100 cards in a data center? There were Tesla, we're bringing up a, a 10,000 10, unit H100 cluster right now, actually. And by the way, it's not it's trivial to bring this up. It's not like, hey, turn on the machines and everything just works. It's we're, we're going 24-7 on this and with a, some very competent people. And it's a, a struggle to get uh, 10,000 H100s to work, like very difficult. And to get all the networking to work and the, the you know. The, the, are you using NVIDIA's networking solution there? For this system, we are using InfiniBand. Nice. But there's, and this is somewhat an esoteric debate of like what's better, like, you know, Rocky, which is basically Ethernet, advanced Ethernet or InfiniBand, I think the general trend for, if you say like much larger scale things might be more towards sort of Ethernet or very high speed Ethernet, which is, you know, ROCE, Rocky. And there's also a shortage of InfiniBand equipment. In fact, that's often more of a shortage than the GPUs. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so the for training, you, you need a dense cluster of computing. There's a massive amount of communication between the, the neural net computers. For inference, you don't, have to, you know, the inference you can run on a, like, I don't know, like an eight node stack or something like that, or even less, just like in the car, you know, we, you know, we're running inference with a basically a hundred watts, a hundred watt, and we'll run inference at eight, but is that a hardware for hundred watts? A hundred, a hardware four is more. So are you going to be driving a hardware three or hardware four car today for the live stream? Hardware three. Oh, okay. Is there is hardware four not supported yet? Not yet. It will be. Does the higher resolution pose a challenge with the data set and everything? How do you manage that? The, we do have to retrain in order to use the resolution because of the fact that it's photons into controls out. That photons are different. You're getting a different bit stream right. with the hardware four cameras than with the hardware three cameras. And anyway, we're in Palo Alto now, so I, I could on page will could, could actually turn it on. Although I had have to. I, don't, I can't do spaces at the same time. Yeah, one last question, Elon. You know, in FSD 1147, they had the side blinker camera and people noticed it started looking better. H how did you achieve that? Is it just better post-processing or something like that? Or maybe something neural-based? We, we can do a lot of post-processing, yeah. So, it, in fact, it, yes, we, we did improve the post-processing. You, you, do you want to get your question in? I was, do you have like a second, Elon? Yeah, just I mean, it's just the longer we take, the longer it... Yeah, let's wrap this up soon. This will be the last question. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it, I'll make it two seconds. So the thing with FSC that I've noticed since I've been using it for God knows how long now, that there's two very distinct variables. There's a safety variable and there's like the comfort confidence variable. And I'm wondering how much are you seeing with V12... Because we know that the software is super safe. You know, I feel very safe using it. But there's like these kind of these little moments where, say, somebody that's new to the software is like, oh, that was kind of inhuman. Oh, that was weird. Is V12 making significant improvements on that side? I, I would love to hear a little bit there. Yeah, well, I mean, you'll just be able to see it. Because I'm literally just going to, uh, I mean, I, I guess what, what I'm going to do is like run Paul all the time. I'm just going to drop random pins on the map. Just like scroll on the map, drop a pin. Then drop another pin, then drop another pin. So it's not, you know, it's not like a pre-programmed route. And we'll just see what happens. And, you know, this, there's a reason we haven't released this to the public is because we, you know, that's, there's still times when it goes wrong. But you'll see that it's extremely smooth. I mean, this is it's very smooth. It's not for... I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Go drive to Stanford where there's a lot of pedestrians and stuff. And thank you so much for your time, Elon. This was really thanks, great. Thanks awesome. for joining us. Right. And thanks, Elon. Prepare for the live stream. Enjoy. Your it's going to be awesome. Here we go. We did it, guys. We got it.